All right, so welcome to my channel, Starseed Alchemy. I'm Dave, and I do telekinesis, psychokinesis, mind over matter. So I developed a kind of test. What you'll see is a feather. Oh, nice! I haven't been able to move the, uh, huh, I haven't been able to move the paper towel, but I just did. So you see two feathers. One's on the back there. See it moving without the uh, paper towel moving? Okay, now there's the other feather, the black one. And that one's moving. I have a closet. It doesn't go to the outside. Okay, it's just close. I'm going to close it. Try to close it gently so it doesn't cause air. Down there, you'll see the only vent that's right around this area. If the air was on anywhere in the apartment, it would be coming out of there. The door is closed, and there's no, just want you to see, I've got no strings, okay, trying to go slow, I don't know what that is hanging off of the, this thing here, it's like a hair or something, this is a feather, no strings, I'll go slow so that you can see. If there was a string, it would glint. Even if there was like a magician's string, you would see some something happening. All it is is a feather balanced on something that's wedged into these books. The same for back here. Um, that's a straw holding it up. Looks like the feather is about to fall off, so let me uh, readjust it just slightly. Ooh, maybe not that much. Ah, come on. This is like the hardest part, <laughs> is balancing. Okay, so there's no air being piped. I'm going to even go like way over so you can see there's no machine or anything. All right, I'm going to sit back down. Now why is the feather moving, but the paper towel isn't moving? Why is one feather moving and the other isn't moving while it's moving? Right? If there was an air draft, it should affect at least the paper towel when it's that close to the other feather. In fact, let's do something. Let's move the paper towel even closer to the feather. It's like right there. And so at least the back side of it, if there was air to affect the feather, then the paper towel should move. Let's zoom in. Now, I'm gonna put on a mask. zoom out again. Okay, I'm wearing a mask. 
wearing a mask. All right. So, zoom in a little bit. Let's see if I can move the paper towel. Nope. So I hit the feather instead. Still working on my focus. There's the other feather. Oh, let's work on the other feather. Now you see my hand here, so I'm not waving my hand. I'm not waving the other hand because the other hand is holding the phone. Okay. Not waving my feet around, and even if I was, I'd, ha I'd have to like be kicking my feet way up in the air. Okay, so black feather is moving, but the other feather isn't moving. Let's put two feathers together. Okay, now let's focus on the brown and white feather. It's a hawk feather. And now that one's moving, but the black one isn't moving. Okay, now the black one's moving. Now I'm trying to teach myself how to move this, uh, oh, I just did it. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to teach myself how to move the, the paper towel. Now I've actually gotten these feathers to fall off. But I figure this is a long enough demonstration. Let's zoom in, just so you see what I'm saying. I'm not doing anything with my hand. It's actually laying here. This is pure mind and uh, the magnetism of the eyes. And the more I practice, you know, the more forms of telekinesis I can do. I couldn't do this a few days ago. I've been doing telekinesis now for four years and four or five months. Um, other things I've been able to do just recently, <coughs> excuse me, was take this business card. You can see it's kind of thick. And I was able to knock it over several times and make it even like go like this, far away from the air. Another thing I've been able to do, come together here, is make this coat hanger just start moving on its own. Um, it's got sheet metal on it. I've been able to make the paper move, but not the hanger, make the hanger move, but not the paper, make the top move, but not the bottom, and the bottom move, but not the top. Um, I'm just, uh, oh, another thing was just yesterday, 
I was able to take a paper towel, um, the, a roll of paper towels, and pull it out just a little bit, place it in front of me, sit back in the chair, and after playing with this piece of paper for a while, so if I focus on it, I should be able to make it move. Still have my mask on. It is moving, but slowly. So anyways, I was able to make the paper towel move back and forth. And before yesterday, I was never able to do that. Before two days ago, I was never able to knock over this card. Um, before today, I was never able to move those feathers like that. And before 30 minutes ago, or even 10 minutes ago, I wasn't able to affect the paper towel which did move just a little bit in the very beginning of this video. So what I've noticed is an acceleration of my abilities, um, different things that I'm now able to do. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to be able to do it consistently because they're new abilities, but in time they will be consistent. And in time I'll be able to move heavier and heavier objects. And eventually, what I'm planning on doing is learning how to levitate things. Once I know how to, <clears throat> once I know how to levitate small objects, lightweight objects like feathers and fuzz, right outside, I'm gonna start working on being able to do that inside. So I brought a little piece of fuzz, and I was able to make it wiggle back and forth on the desk just a little bit. One of those like dandelion fuzzy things. Uh, but like a big dandel like a big fat dandelion that's got like a long stem and then like kind of these things like this. And they almost look like feathers themselves a little bit. But I was able to make it gently waif waif wafed back and forth. And only for a short time and then I kinda I lost the connection. So um, I've been able to make the feather fall off, which means that I've had to like lift one side or push down one side really, really strongly in order to eventually get it to an angle where it would slide off. So I've been able to do that. Um, I've been able to hang feathers and things and put my hand on them and have them lift up just slightly. I've been able to take dandelion fluff and uh, make it rise up in the air. I've been able to take things that are heavy in water and make them float in the water. So eventually, I'm going to work on levitation. When I, get it, when I get to the point where I can actually levitate like a feather outside, then I'm going to get something that's heavier, a heavier feather maybe, and heavier and heavier and heavier until I can levitate pretty much anything. Once I can do this, I'm going to start working on trying to levitate my own body. And eventually I'm going to be doing, you know, skydiving and other kinds of things that will get me used to falling through the air. And then I'll take what I've learned and it's going to be hard, right? Because when you're falling, you're kind of afraid that you're going to die unless you pull the parachute. So I'm going to have to get over that, and I'm going to have to find a zen um, state of mind. A state of mind that allows me, when I'm standing on the ground, to, to make you know the air move around and stuff like that. 
and eventually my hope is that I'll be able to fly. Now I know this sounds super crazy. Um, I got the idea to fly, not the, not the method of flying, but I got the idea of flying from Chris Zanetti. He's one of those YouTubers who does telekinesis. He wrote a book, I think called Being Superhuman or something like that, or Superhuman Abilities. And I actually wound up reading his book before I ever saw, before I ever landed on his channel and on YouTube. But, you know, I have my own methods <clears throat> and I set a goal a long time ago to be able to levitate heavy objects within 15 years. Since, uh, you know, 2024, since uh, 2019, in 2024, I will have been doing this for five years. By that time, I will have amassed a lot of knowledge and I've already amassed a lot of knowledge. I've already done very impossible things, but I've done them a lot of times by accident. But like I said, um, I'm teaching myself the impossible. Eventually, I'm going to start taking what I'm learning with telekinesis and I, I'm going to use it to try and teleport my body. Um, I'm going to use telekinesis to try and heal myself of different things that I've had my whole life. And if I can heal myself, then eventually and, and not hurt myself in the process of healing myself because that can that could happen but I'll basically use myself as a guinea pig and you know intention goes a long way if you have the proper intention which is to heal um, you don't necessarily have to know all the science behind it and everything or all the metaphysics behind it it helps but eventually that's 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 where I'm headed um, and I may have even bigger goals than that that I'm not sharing with you guys but uh, I'm a real telekinetic I live in Boulder Colorado I teach this skill um, and I teach preparatory skills such as meditation, breath work, um, how to stretch the body to open up the channels, uh, the, the energy channels. And then of course I, I teach uh, internal energy cultivation, um, what I know of it, what I've learned. And see that star, see that star is turning. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Just look at the reflection, how the reflection is changing. And you know, you may say some people think this is witchcraft or whatever. I would say that actually witchcraft um, borrows from some of the things that I'm doing. But I believe there is real magic. Um, you know, that's why that feather's moving like that. And real magic happens when your consciousness develops to the point where you start to feel like you're one with other things, or at least you're really, you know, like if, like you wouldn't think it's strange if you're floating in a lake or in a pool and 
it's completely still. You get in and there's a ball near you and then you splash around a little bit and the ball starts moving, right? You wouldn't think that strange. Well, air is like water. Air is a fluid like water. It's just a less um, dense fluid. Chi is also a fluid. Magnetism is a fluid. And when you get rid of the chaos within the fluid, and you get all the particles in the fluid to move in one direction, then you can affect what's ever, whatever, whatever is in the fluid. Like that feather, right? I'm affecting the fluid. And the feather itself is a fluid. It's a fluid of particles and forces. And so in a way, I'm touching the feather already. Did you see how high it rose? So you have two natures to you, okay? You have the nature of yin and the nature of yang. Um, you also have the nature of neutral, but with the yin and yang, An expression of that is electric and magnetic. And you can use electric and magnetic to then affect now the paper towel is not moving at all. That other feather wasn't moving at all. Maybe it starts to, but that feather's moving. So I'm not playing a trick on you guys. The, the star is still moving when I concentrate on it and I kind of squeeze a little bit. When I hit the right frequency, the star begins to move. When I hit the right frequency, the feather starts to move. I'm not fanning the air, right? That's fanning the air. Now, something you won't see with the feather is that it stays at a certain angle like that because gravity wants to pull it back down. So when you see that, know that there's something else at play. And that something else is consciousness and how consciousness affects chi and electromagnetism or the dual nature of yin and yang and I'm, I'm going to cut this video short but you know there's a lot there's a lot to unpack with telekinesis and telekinesis to me is just a gateway ability to many other abilities I'm glad that I started when I did Because I almost didn't. I almost said what I saw on YouTube. I was like, well, that looks like fun. Um, 
looks like a cool trick or whatever. That person can move something with their mind. But I, I seriously doubted whether I could do it or not. And even if you believe that maybe you could do it, if you don't then practice doing it, then you won't get good at doing it, then you won't open up other abilities because telekinesis is like a flower that blooms, right? That unfolds. As it unfolds, it shows another layer. And then that unfolds, and that allows the other layer to f unfold, and that allows more growth on the in the center. And so there's a, this constant unfoldment going on. And telekinesis is kind of like an engine that allows you to just keep doing that. All right, guys, like, subscribe, share, and click on the bell notification if you want to be alerted when I drop more videos like this one.